if instead of rebooting movies, retelling them from a different point of view became popular, which movie would you like retold? The game starring Michael Douglas. I want to see it from consumer recreation services point of view. I want to see how they manage all the actors and situations to make sure everything goes the way they want it. People brought up Cabin in the Woods. My issue with Cabin in the Woods is those people didn't know beforehand what might or was going to happen. Michael Douglas' character knew about the organization and how Sean Penn's character talked about the experience. Also, it's in the woods. The game was done in San Francisco so if this movie was done, you can show different povs of San Francisco like the Golden Gate Bridge and different areas of San Fran these actors live in. The Truman Show. Truman grew up in front of the cameras in a fictional town. Michael Douglas' character does neither. Final Destination from Death's Perspective. I imagine it would just be Skeleton Hand setting up Deadly Root Goldberg Machine with some classical music in the back. Groundhog Day, a day in the life of Ned Ryson, except we don't see the repeat, we only see the Ned Ryson from the timeline in which Phil hugs him and makes him uncomfortable and the rest of the film is Ned trying to figure out his sexuality. Mean Girls Told by the Girl Who Doesn't Even Go There, This, or Glen Coco, either way, I'd watch. Forrest Gump told from Lieutenant, Dan's perspective, could be really good focusing on his training then getting sent to Vietnam and being in charge of an idiot, then the struggles of a soldier returning from war and the way the VA treated him, just for him to reunite with the idiot soldier who saved his life. Princess, and, the, frog, we got Maleficent out of Sleeping Beauty, so where the F is Dr. Fasilier's backstory? He had a debt with literal demons and nobody seems to give a sh. This is such an underrated Disney movie, it gets so easily forgotten. I think I need Isma's story, too. God can you imagine that? She would have advised generations of emperors, likely watched the whole empire grow into what it is, then, one day, the current emperor dies and suddenly there's a baby as ruler. He grows up spoiled, spends frivolously on himself, ignores the problems of the people, and has a personality so unpredictable. He executes commoners for like, nothing. Keep in mind the old man who threw off his groove only survived because he happened to get tangled up in a tapestry. Isma was watching the empire she loved, arguably the one that she built, go down a path of ruin because of the whims of a spoiled narcissistic child. Her actions seem pretty reasonable in that light. How about Cloverfield from the view of a professional camera crew? This question instantly made me think of Cloverfield but not for that reason. I remember when it came out people noticed that there's someone else with a camera in the bridge scene and it became a popular idea that they could do a sequel from that group's perspective. This is what makes Cobra Kai so damn good. Johnny was the real karate kid. I also agree with Barney Stinson. I would think aliens from Newt's perspective would be pretty substantial. How a girl survived all that and the loss of her family alone on a foreign planet. It would be essentially the story of Newt living on Hadley's hope. Some background with her and her family. To the point her parents get face hugged. How the aliens slaughtered the colony. How Newt survived in the air ducts. And what she lived through while ending with Ripley finding her and bringing her back to the marine operations base. It would be set as a claustrophobic horror movie. With a good script this movie could easily do $300 millimo. There is a comic from Dark Horse that has done this. It's two issues long. Early 90s. Actually good. Aliens. Newt's tale. Well this isn't my idea or suggestion because Orson Scott Card already did it but he wrote Ender's Game a second time from Bean's point of view and called the story Ender's Shadow. Robin Hood from the Sheriff of Nottingham's perspective. It'd be great to watch a movie about a medieval cop trying to catch a highwayman. Apparently, the Russell Crowe Robin Hood movie was supposed to be this. However, Ridley Scott rewrote the script. I've seen that dumb movie twice and I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. So forgettable. And he honestly believes he's taxing because the realm needs more protection and you can't without paying the soldiers. But this guy keeps stealing the tax revenue and robbing the largest tax bracket. Tom Riddle. Becoming Lord Voldemort. I just think it would be interesting to watch his journey and his story. Although, maybe not all that interest as it seems like he took a 30 year break to do whatever. There was a 17 year break in the Fellowship of the Ring storyline, where Gandalf goes to research the ring, which was glossed over entirely, even without relatively unadging characters. There's no reason not to just have a scene which starts with a 30 years later. Caption. 
Not a movie but I would definitely watch Breaking Bad but from the perspective of Gus Fring, that dude has a crazy story to tell. I like that we get a little of that in Better Call Saul. Wait wait I've got it. Breaking Bad but from the perspective of the lawyer. E.T. From his point of view, the F this kid poking me for. Avatar The Last Airbender from the point of view of anyone but M. Night Shyamalan. I would love to see Azula's story. The series did a good job with her character, but expanding on it would be great. That'll give us a story of Iroh's life. Let us see him go from generic Fire Nation prince to the wise, tea-loving, party show player who guided his nephew, and end with his journey to the spirit world. It would be the most wholesome show. There was no Avatar movie in Ba Sing Se. 500 Days of Summer would be really interesting to see Summer's perspective on everything. I once spoiled the movie for a friend. She said she was going to watch it and I, having already seen it, asked is that the one where they all die in the end? She got a little upset because I spoiled it. A couple weeks later I saw her again and she told me she was waiting the whole time for them to die but no one did. We had a good laugh. You've spoiled the ending for me. Now, I'm going to be watching this for the first time waiting for them all to live. Passengers. Told like this. Aladdin. From Jafar's perspective. A college theater group did a very R-rated version that is absolutely hilarious. Which can be found on YouTube under Twisted. The story of a Grand Vizier. What I would really enjoy is the late 80s early 90s hand animated Aladdin where Jafar is the defender of the Sultan's realm against some nefarious interloper who is bent on stealing the prince's heart and worming his way into the royal family, and he has a genie. F you Jafar. I don't like musicals and still this one was so good I keep bringing it up. Such a well done piece. Funny. Dark and yet somewhat touching. That theater group is called Starkid. And they are awesome. I'm going through this entire thread linking it to as many relevant comments as I can. It's so goddamn funny, and so worth the 2 hours. Also, fun fact, that theater group is the same one who did the very Potter musical. My other favorite one by Starkid is the trail to Oregon it's about a family going through the Oregon trail. Just like the game, it's brilliant, and if you ever played the game as a kid, you'll appreciate it. A Lion King prequel from Scar's perspective. Show what really happened before the Mufasa era and see how Mufasa cheated Scar out of the throne. Scar's real name is Taka, which literally means garbage. F ed up childhood. Scar, why can't you be more like your brother Mufasa? He's already started his own pride and is running for city council. All you do is sit around and hang out with those vile hyenas all day. You're a disappointment to this family. You should check out the Lion Guard. It's a kid's cartoon that is canon and tells the backstory of Scar, how he got his Scar, and why he was so bad. Scar's story isn't the focus, but it is important and I like how they made it all match to the OG Lion King trilogy. Airbud, but told from the pop of the kid who was pulled out of a basketball game to be replaced by a dog. There's nowhere in the rule book it says you can pull Emmy out so a dog can play. Either, I want to see a new version where the team they face in the championship brings in a tiger and forces the dopey rules committee to accept that. Yes, there is an implicit understanding that the players must be human. Or, they just stick to precedent and the tiger destroys everything and everyone. Whatever. It only caused him to train harder and harder. Bury himself into sports to prove others wrong. He ended up finding football and the rest is history until the ghosts of his past came back to haunt him. The true Michael Vick story. Damn that took a sharp left turn. I'd love to see Airbud from the pop of the coach who puts the dog in. And I'd love to see that team lose and the coach having to explain to parents why he thought putting a dog in would be a good idea. I am weirdly qualified to answer this given the fact that I'm writing a quantitative analysis on the entire Airbud Airbud series. Basically, in the Airbud movie, no one was specifically pulled from the team or the game to make room for Buddy. Rather, we see through the movie that one of the kids who got taken out of the team because of his father, thus triggering the need for Buddy to play rather than simply being the halftime show mascot. The kid being taken out of the team by his dad was actually a really interesting plot point because his dad was super arrogant and overbearing and clearly forced a lot onto his son. A story from the kid's point of view would likely end up being very depressing because of this. Airbud surprisingly had a few reoccurring themes of abuse which added a bit of a dark depth to it which really set it aside from the other Airbud movies. I could go on about this forever. I'm sorry. You're writing a what? 
horror movies from the Monster Ghost Prov, basically Beetlejuice. I want to see a superhero movie from the perspective of an insurance adjuster. It could be a comedy, but just like every day he wakes up and he's enjoying his morning coffee and a bowl of oatmeal. Then he flips open the morning paper and sees Iron Man went full Michael Bay again or the Avengers were back in town. Long sigh, stands up, chair squeaks on floor, clicks pen, straps iPad to hip, Titans camera strap. He's the real superhero. There was a show called Powerless that was pretty similar to that concept, about an agency that deal with the aftermath of the collateral damage from superhero villain fights. It wasn't the best show, but I thought it was a cool idea. Unfortunately, it was cancelled after a season. I still think it's an interesting pov and I'd like to see someone else take a shot at it. I love this aspect of the boys that touched on this aspect of the effing soups. There was an entire comic book series called Damage Control, hinted at in the Spider-Man movie with Michael Keaton, that covered something along these lines. The guys from DC were the people who put the cities back together after a superhero fracas, after the explosions and the villains are vanquished. These guys show up and rebuild it like new, or like old. It was written like a sitcom just in comic book form. Somebody called Disney, I think I got a new show for them. An alien invasion movie told strictly from the alien's perspective, complete with their confusion about why the humans are responding the way they are. It would make sense to us but would take the narrative form of mystery for them. It could be a clever way to illustrate cultural misunderstanding. An example could be let's show them we are friendly by revealing all our weapons. To demonstrate we aren't hiding anything. Which the humans would take as a threat. I always liked that about the Borg on Star Trek. They genuinely thought they were helping the people they were conquering. A villain is scarier when it thinks it's doing the right thing. That's how the Minbri war starts on Babylon 5. The Minbri, a race of aliens, approach the human fleet with all of their weapons raised and engaged so the humans preemptively fire on them. Turns out to the Minbri raising all your weapons is a show of respect. Like, we think you are a worthy enough opponent that we should come prepared. To not raise your weapons would be a huge sign of disrespect. With all of their weapons raised and engaged, gun ports open but weapons not powered on or aimed. Actually, not that the humans could tell that the weapons weren't active since the Minbury sensors doing a casual scan of the human ships overloaded the human zone sensors, which was misconstrued as intentional jamming and a prelude to attack. The horror comedy version of this is Tucker and Dale vs Evil. If you haven't seen it, it's exactly what you're describing. But two hillbillies instead of aliens and campers instead of Earth's Air Force. Tucker what am I supposed to say? Dale, oh hidey ho officer, we've had a doozy of a day. There we were minding our own business, just doing chores around the house when kids started killing themselves all over my property. Dale yeah, yeah, just like that. Tucker they're never gonna believe that. Dale but that's exactly what happened. This is basically the book form of I Am Legend. They have been trying for decades to make the movie properly. God what an amazing book. It's so dark but so believable. Forrest Gump from Jenny's perspective. That would be a dark and effed up movie. Who would play her father? And it'd be even worse running into Forrest every few years and he's happy and loving. Or that random time he comes into her car to punch that boyfriend of hers. Kevin Spacey. Make it where you never saw his face. Just a shadow in the doorway or the sound of a slamming door and the girl's reaction. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from Willy Wonka's point of view. I want to hear his wicked thoughts. Wasn't the Johnny Depp one basically his point of view? That's what I thought. Funnily enough it would have made more sense if the two movies had their names swapped. Or from the Oompa Loompas pov. They probably have some serious sh going on behind the scenes. Their attempts to unionize being crushed under the heel of Wonka's corporate interests. Oompa Loompa Doom but he do. Wonka's filthy rich but what does he do? He sits on his A while we're working for scraps. What do you think will come of that? We'll rise against the bourgeoisie. Oompa Loompa Doom Putty. Comrade. We'll seize the means of producing the chocolate. Through Grandpa Joe's point of view. There's gotta be a reason why that lazy able A stayed in that bed for all those years. Eat. Sleep. Gang bang. Repeat. Shawshank Redemption told from the warden's point of view. IDK that may be too dark of a story. I'd like to think that the last thing that went through his head, other than that bullet, was how the hell Andy Dufresne ever got the best of him. 
I want a movie and a book called Neville Longbottom and the Sword of Grafinder about life in the school while the big three were wandering around the woods. This isn't exactly what you described, but there's a fantastic play called Puffs that covers all seven years of Harry's time at Hogwarts. From the perspective of the Hufflepuff students, when I made a trip to Nick a few years back to see some friends, I decided to see Puffs as a little addition to the trip. My friends ended up bailing on meeting up, but I still saw the play. I wasn't expecting much but holy sh was it easily the highlight of my trip. To this day I quote it constantly with my other Puff friends who've seen it, and I generally regard it as more canon than the cursed child. Obligatory I am not a threat. Please be my friend. I was thinking Draco Malfoy, myself. I think he's a more interesting and deeper character than seeing him through Harry's eyes gives him credit for. Especially in the last two books. I have zero interest in what the big three are up to after the series ends. But I'd watch an ever long bottom series. Luna Lovegood, too. Nice try, Disney. Who knows? Maybe some good ideas will get done rather than the usual garbage. I want to see a Batman movie from a goon's point of view, like, he wakes up and eats some cereal before meeting up with the crew, and just by chance he hung out with Joe the goon that day instead of Bob, now he is just gooning around at night when all of a sudden he gets his A gets kicked in by a fine Batman, he can't believe his bad luck, and just like that, he was gone, coolest f ed up thing to ever happen to him, here is that exact thing, I can't remember what it is. But there was some comic with an issue from a random goon's perspective. They make him sympathetic but then he gets killed at the end. Somebody may know what I'm referring to. The Princess Bride from Humperdinck's Path, or Inigo Montoya. From childhood to finding the six-fingered man to what he does after. Star Wars is a goofy stormtrooper buddy cop comedy. Like the Mandalorian final opening. That's kind of the premise of Tag Blink Are Dead. Basically almost every stormtrooper you see in Star Wars are actually two rebels disguised as stormtroopers after being captured on the Tantive IV. The Sandlot from the perspective of James L. Jones, how he grew up in the pre-depression, pre-civil rights era, assuming he was born in 1890-1900s, how he fell in love with baseball, went blind, what his life was like, and more details on how the beast came into his life and why rumors ran rampant about the pup. A disabled and disfigured war hero, long past his prime, hunts down a cell of terrorists, capturing one of their leaders, but not before she's able to send a message call his former mentor out of retirement. In the process of retrieving the message, a family of locals is caught in the crossfire, which said former mentor uses to his advantage to radicalize the adopted son of the family. The boy manages to destroy a critical military base, giving the terrorists legitimacy, and builds up a name for himself over the years. As the boy's exploits become more and more legendary, our hero comes upon a shocking revelation the boy is his own son, hidden away by his former mentor. He tries and fails to convince his son to join him, but the son rejects him, forcing him to choose between his honor and his family. Star Wars would be effing wild. A Batman movie from Alfred's point of view. There goes Master Wayne in his furry suit off to beat up a clown for the millionth time for closure instead of going to therapy. Rambo First Blood is about the struggle of an honest sheriff trying to stop a sociopath from creating chaos and death in his town. The book First Blood is based on... First Blood by David Morrill, is actually half John Rambo's perspective, and half from the Sheriff's perspective. Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Germans explain why this ineffectual American tried to interfere with their efforts to unleash the power of God. Just explaining why the villain did what the villain did without the vague bullshit to get power or to become all powerful, like Black Panther gave alleged motivation to kill Monga. That this resource-rich secret African nation exists even back in the day of the Atlantic slave trade and they never lifted a finger to defend their fellow Africans. Wakanda is pretty messed up. No one is a villain from their own perspective. Why does the villain think they are the good guys? Everyone thinks they are the hero of their own story. Some dude who carved another dude's eye out with a spoon. A friggin' spoon. And I'm just dying laughing. And his kids are all wah. The Shining. Employing the perspective of Tony, the imaginary friend of Danny, focusing on how Tony reckons the situation, start to finish, from inside Danny. Semi-related, I didn't believe in this concept being worth a whole redo till I read Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow, 
It's cool going over the same base material but adding a whole second perspective and explanation for things that may not have made sense from the original. Dark Knight but just follow the Joker at all times. Star Wars only told from Vader's viewpoint. The fifth element from Ruby Rod's perspective. The Sandlot from the cool kid's view. Harry Potter from Voldemort's perspective. Jim that dark magic. I'd get down with Snape's perspective as well.